In this presentation we should look into rail signaling and in the project I have a context capture model of the current area and we've got a newly designed railway station and the railway starts from the station continues on to a bridge and then ramps down to the ground level and then continues. If we look at the project from a top view and um, start the alignment tracking tool we can select any of the uh, rail alignments within the project and by the tool we can then track the station values. So the alignment starts there at the station area and then continues through a turn out and then further up. Pick another view with an overview of the station. Uh, our task is to place a free aspect signal in the end of the platform with a route indicator for the upcoming turnout. So if we pick another view where we have zoomed in to the end of the platform and we we'll bring up the tool for placing objects. We'll start filtering out the objects by selecting the category signal and um, we'll select mast for the discipline and we'll pick a mast without a foundation. We give the mast a name of SN001-M and we'll pick a method of placing that mast. We'll use the free XY method We'll select the main railway, the Mandela Parkway light rail, and we'll select an offset from that alignment of 275, and this will be perpendicular to the track center line. And we will select a distance or an offset along the rail from my current cursor position of 3 meters, and we'll set an elevation of minus. 200, mm, 200 millimeters. Once we've done it, we can see that the, the mass there will offset three meters from my cursor position. And if we zoom in and pick the edge of the platform, we can then place down the mast at that point. Next will be to select the 3D aspect signal head. We call that SN001 and we'll use a hook point as the placing method and we'll select a rotation of, of 180 degrees. And as soon as I come close to a predefined hook point, it will automatically snap to where it understand it can be mounted. And we'll pick a root indicator And uh, same here, as soon as we come close, it understands where it could be placed. And finally, we'll pick it as a speed board and set a speed sign of, of, um, with a speed limit of 10 miles per hour. I'll call that SB. And same here, we'll use the hook point. And same here, when I come close, it knows where we can place that one. And if we pick another view where we stand at the start of the platform, we can use the fly through tool, select the main rail and a starting station of 10. That will uh, bring us to, to the start of the platform. And we can increase the speed and drive forward towards the, the signal. If we have a stop there and uh, just select that signal, if we right click on that one, we can look at the ID. So this ID here is the unique identifier or the tag for the signal head. We've got the part number, we've got a symbol that makes up the graphic for, for that signal head. And if we look at the attributes, the project attributes, we can see the, the elevation of that signal head above the track center line, the offset, an XYZ coordinate, a station value, and the associated track name. So 
So from this point we will move over to the track layout mode and look into the route and aspect drawing or the scheme plan. So we'll open up the track layout and here we got the same railway but represented as a straight line and uh, of course the center line here is also intelligent so if we bring up the alignment tracking tool select the main rail we can track the station values starts at that point and then continues further up the objects we have placed down in the 3d model we can use a synchronization tool and populate those components in in this mode or in this drawing as well so if we use the tool for synchronizing this we can then select the uh, 3d model and pick up the data from that model that will give us a, a list of all the components that we have placed down in the 3d model and if we scroll down to find the main railway you can see the station values where they are placed um, and we can select the TPWS magnets to stop and trigger and then the route indicator and the, the signal and so on if we select them all and then tick that scale symbol by track scale because this uh, track here is scaled if we hit place it will start placing down the objects in, in this mode and of course if we zoom in to the signal head if you right click on that one look at the device ID we got exactly the same information as we saw in the 3d model <clears throat> we got two magnets we got a stop one and we got a trigger there should be a third one here uh, an arm or an arming trigger uh, arming magnet so we can use the same tool for placing objects we can identify the trigger that will give us a shortcut into the part database and we can select the arming magnet call that one SA we can use the same type of method for placing and start sliding that along the track I got a dialog box here that will update with the current station value depending on where where I am and we can see that one is placed on station 70 and the arm should be placed five meters away so 75 so if we use that sa station we have then locked the position for for that new magnet place it down we're done so the workflow we have just seen is that we start from the 3d model and then populate the scheme plan we can of course go the other way around so if we use that signal head we can right click on that one and hit navigate it will take us back to the 3d model and once it loads it will highlight the signal head let's pick another view so we get a a more overview of the station and uh, we'll rotate the view a little bit so we can see that magnet so if we zoom in a little bit we can in the 3d model use exactly the same tool but use the, the scheme plan as the source page and if we update we can see that the T TPWS stop and trigger is already placed in the 3d model as well as the signal so if we pick the arm and just hit place it will place that down in the 3d model so here we have um, we have gone the opposite way in the workflow so to speak and of course that arming device there is exactly the same one as we placed down in the scheme plan scheme plan in the first place right so the signal head we got a physical 3d model representation of the signal head and we got another schematic representation of it in the scheme plan but of course we also have uh, a wiring diagram or a wiring schematic for that signal 
So if you navigate into the wirings, we can see how this signal is connected. It's connected by a 12 core cable from a junction box, another cable to the cable terminals within the uh, signal control house. And this junction box in the middle here is actually on the mast. So SNW1-M, that's the identifier of the mast. So if you right click on that one, of course we can then navigate back into the 3D model. And that mast there is highlighted. That junction box is on the rear side of that mast there. Right, thank you very much.